If you're trying to build out a real estate financial model or you have a real estate financial modeling interview exam coming up, real estate financial modeling can have a lot of gray areas where it's not actually clear exactly what you need to do in order to build a model that's accurate. And one of those gray areas is often if you should inflate your rent and your expenses on a monthly basis or on an annual basis and how to actually model that in Excel. So in today's video, what we're gonna do is first answer whether you should inflate your values on a monthly basis or on an annual basis and what makes sense for each situation. So if you have a real estate financial modeling interview exam coming up, or you're just trying to make a more accurate real estate financial model, you may be wondering if it makes sense to show your growth once per year or every single month, applying that annual growth rate on a monthly basis. So by the end of this video, you'll know when it makes sense to show annual growth and when it makes sense to show monthly growth and the most efficient way to model out each in Excel. Now, this is one of the most common questions I get in my real estate financial modeling courses. So what do I do if I'm only given basic rent and basic expenses? Do I inflate these and grow these once per year on the first month of every year in my financial model, or do I do it every single month? Now, my answer to this question is almost always on a monthly basis, and here's why. When you're modeling out a commercial real estate investment, you're likely going to have multiple tenants. So whether you're analyzing an office building, a multifamily apartment complex, retail shopping center, or industrial warehouse, you're likely going to have more than one tenant at the property. So even though the rents for each tenant are likely only going to change once per year for each individual lease, what happens is if you have multiple leases rolling throughout the year, you're going to have staggered increases in your rents as the year progresses. So chances are that all leases aren't going to expire in the same month in your deal, and therefore you're going to have some staggered lease rollover in your project. And because of that, it makes sense to model out revenue growth on a monthly basis. Now the same thing is true for expenses, but this is actually for different reasons. So many expenses in commercial real estate grow by what's called the consumer price index. And the consumer price index is going to change on a monthly basis. So for costs like labor and materials and things that are going to come up at your real estate investment deal, the costs of those things are going to be rolling and increasing on a month to month basis rather than just having one major reset on the same month every year. Now where this isn't necessarily true is with property taxes and insurance. So with property taxes, you're usually going to have an annual reset, so you can change those once per year. And with insurance rates, you're likely only going to have changes to your premium once per year as well. So you can make those changes on an annual basis if you have that level of detail as far as what's given to you. But if not, I would go with the monthly increase. So that brings us to our next question, which is how do you actually build these in Excel? So what we're gonna do is actually build these formulas side by side in a dynamic, efficient way, so you can build out one formula and everything else is going to change for you. So let's jump into Excel and work through that example now. All right, so now we are in Excel, and what we're gonna do here is build out a rent schedule on both annual increases and monthly increases. So our rent and growth inputs are going to be the same for both. Our formula is just going to produce a different output. Now, we're gonna start with a really basic example. So starting rent is $1,000 and the annual growth is 3%. So the annual growth is going to grow this only once per year, and the monthly growth is going to grow this every single month. But at the end of the day, the annual growth is going to be exactly the same for both at 3%. So how do you build out a formula that does this in a dynamic way? So all we need to do is build out this formula once for each column, and we can just drag and copy this down. Well, let's start with our annual rent per month and start with that formula. So again, in this scenario, all we want to do is grow this once per year on the first month of the year. Now we'll start this at $1,000 in month one, and we want this to grow at a 3% increase in month 13 and down in month 25, and that's it. So how are we going to build this formula? Well, the first thing we're gonna do is set this cell E3 equal to $1,000, and I'm gonna lock that cell by hitting F4, and multiply that by one plus our annual growth rate of 3% or B3. And again, lock that cell. Now, if I just let this go, hit enter, 
Excel is just going to calculate that inflated number at a full year of inflation. But we need this to be dynamic. So the way we can make that happen is by taking this value to the power of the month that we're analyzing minus one divided by 12. So this is how this looks. So what we're gonna do is take this to, and we're gonna use the round down function. And we're gonna take this to the number of, we'll start with D3. So the month that we're analyzing, minus one, I'll close my parentheses, divide that by 12, and then I wanna round this to the number of digits, which is zero, which will get me a whole number, close my parentheses, and hit enter. Now, what did we just do there? Well, by using the round down function, what we're doing is we're saying that if this value is anything less than 13, then we wanna keep this at $1,000, or really taking that $1,000 times 1.03, to the zero power, which is going to give you exactly $1,000. But what happens if I copy this formula all the way down? So if I hold down control and hit C, and then highlight everything and hit Alt E S F and hit enter, now what I have is I have increases starting in month 13 and staying static all the way until month 25. And if we drag this down even further, this formula would continue to work. So what's happening in month 13? Well, if I hit F2, what we're doing is we're taking 13 minus one divided by 12 and rounding that down. And that's gonna be the first value that equals one. So by doing that, we're taking $1,000 times 1.03 to the first power, which is going to give us that first inflation number. And this is a dynamic formula. So now we have our annual formula working correctly and that looks great. So now what do we do if we need to model monthly inflation? So we wanna to get to $1,030 in month 13 and $1,061 in month 25, but we want this to grow steadily throughout the year. So to do this, we're gonna start off our formula by again, starting with B2 or the starting rent and hitting F4 to lock that cell and multiplying that by one plus that annual growth rate again. So a very similar formula to start. And then all we need to do here is take this to the power of D3, or the month that we're analyzing, minus one, close my parentheses, and then divide that by 12 and close my parentheses again. So now when I hit enter, I get $1,000. I'm gonna hold down control and hit C, and then do the same thing that I did for annual growth. So Alt E S F to copy and paste those formulas. And now what you'll see is that I have these increases every single month and when I get to month 13, it's exactly $1,030. And again, when I get to month 25, exactly $1,061. So what is this formula doing? Well, if I hit F2 on cell F15, what you can see is that I'm taking that $1,000 times 1.03, except now what I'm doing is taking this to a fraction of the full year. So in this case, I'm taking month 13 minus one, so 12 divided by 12, so I'm gonna take a full year of inflation. But in the month prior, I'm gonna take 11 months out of 12 months of inflation here. Now, why do we subtract one? Well, we subtract one because we assume that in month one, we have zero inflation here. So we assume that our starting rent is $1,000 and that's going to be our rent for month one. So that's why if we subtract one and we copy all of this down, everything should be working correctly. So that's how you can build out annual and monthly growth for your cash flows in Excel. So there you have it, monthly versus annual growth modeling in your real estate financial model and when to use each. Now, if you wanna learn more about real estate financial modeling and what my courses are like, I highly recommend checking out my real estate financial modeling crash course. You can grab that for free in the link in the description below. So if you're looking to learn more about real estate financial modeling or advance your real estate investment career, I definitely suggest checking that out. So if you like this video, make sure to let me know by hitting the like button, subscribing to the channel and sharing it with anyone who might find this helpful. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in another video.